Hi, I'm Monique Kuipers. Thank you for um, watching my presentation. In this presentation, I would like to talk about construct validation and measure development in multiple languages for the purposes of replication research or multilingual comparative research. I will take the story world absorption scale in its various adaptations as a starting point to talk about this. When we originally developed the story world absorption scale, it was in Dutch. We took great care to develop items that were similar to real readers' expressions using interviews with Dutch readers. Our list of developed items underwent pilot testing, after which we removed uh, some difficult to understand items. Uh, and after that, the list of items underwent exploratory and confirmatory factor analysis. And we were left with um, quite a set of satisfactory instrument of 18 items divided over four dimensions that was found reliable in several different research settings. Then, for the purposes of publishing our results in international journals, we translated those items to English, and the scale was then used in um, English language empirical literary studies. Without our translation ever really being tested by native speakers or using measures of convergent or discriminant validity. When it came to the development of the German version of the SWAS, I wanted to put more care into its translation work and followed specific guidelines set out to develop and test translations of measuring instruments. I had one German speaker translate the items from English um, and Dutch to German, and then another speaker back translating it from German to English. We then talked, the three of us, three researchers, about the disagreements in the translation and looked for compromises. And finally, we came up with a version of the SWAS in German that we were satisfied with. Now, straightforward translation of instruments and stimulus materials from one language into another in the case of studying aesthetic objects and experiences um, is perhaps not ideal. There are cultural differences underlying aesthetic objects and experiences that would be ignored if we would just focus on linguistic translations. Like, for example, Dutch readers um, in my uh, earlier research uh, seem to find some of the scales that I used then um, to capture absorption um, over-exaggerated. Um, plus, straightforward translations made by researchers can be focused on theoretical precision, which is of course important, but it can also mean we um, could lose sight of the participants and whether or not they understand what it is that we want to capture. Now, I would like to zoom in on some differences in expressions between English and German when it comes to the experience of absorption in the two versions of the SWAS that I described earlier. Um, now, straight translations of items from English to German led to some overcomplicated grammar in the German versions, like, for example, in the mental imagery item. Um, ich könnte mir vorstellen, wie die Welt in der die Geschichte stattfand ausgesehen hat was um, a translation for I could imagine what the world in which the story took place looked like. Um, which this German sentence is maybe not the most colloquially, um, you know, um, used in everyday language kind of sentence. In German, there are also various different words for story, which can be used to further specify what was meant, which meant that the German items are more detailed than the English ones. So for example, here for transportation, um, when I was reading the story, it sometimes seemed as if I were in the story world too, which we translated as, während ich die Erzählung las, kam es mir manchmal vor, als befände ich mich auch in der Welt der Geschichte. So Erzählung and Geschichte are both words for um, story. Um, Erzählung literally means the, the told uh, or what is being told, uh, whereas Geschichte is story or history. Um, so there's sort of different levels um, of storiness, if you will, in these two words. Um, now, one of the more difficult problems um, in, is that there is no word for absorption in German. If you would use the word absorbierend, people would think you are talking about a story's ability to soak up water. But being vertieft in the story, like um, we did here, uh, that's the translation that we went with, um, it can mean multiple things. Literally, it means to deepen, which is used not just to describe immersion in a story world, but it can also uh, be used to describe um, a deepening of one's understanding of something. Um, now, one thing that seemed important for the English as well as the German version of the SWAS is to double check these phrasings that we came up with against natural language of readers used um, to express their absorption experiences. 
um, which we've done originally with the Dutch um, original version of the swas, but never with the German or English versions. And uh, this could tell us something, hopefully, about the validity or the usefulness of these measures and whether they are actually measuring uh, the same thing, whether they're actually capturing what we want them to capture. Um, for that, we look towards online review platforms, Goodreads in particular, to get an idea of the natural expressions of readers um, about their reading experiences in both languages. Basically, we asked ourselves, does the SWAS in its current form, English and German, reflect absorbing reading experience to the best of its abilities? Apart from focusing on the differences in expressions between the two languages, we could also ask ourselves more overarching questions like, does it encompass all the theoretical aspects of absorption? Has absorption or the scholarship on absorption changed since the scale was originally developed, which is now um, about 10 years ago? Um, should it encompass aspects of absorbed reading inspired by current reading practices, um, which are more um, social of nature and take place on online platforms, for example? Um, and can the questions be phrased in a more understandable or relatable way? As said, we took to the practice of digital social reading online to gather unprompted reader testimonials from both English and German readers to test the viability of our translated skills. Some background. Social media platforms like Goodreads are online environments where millions of people come to share their love of the written word. The website Goodreads alone has collected about 3.5 billion book reviews written by about 125 million members from all over the world. As such, um, this online social reading platform holds a wealth of potentially valuable qualitative data on reading experiences, on how people interact about reading, or on the kind of criteria that people use to evaluate the books that they read. Now, as these reviews are completely unprompted by researchers, the data found on Goodreads reflects the concerns of readers themselves in the language that they use naturally to describe these experiences. Now, we scraped English and German language reviews from Goodreads. Um, to be clear, Goodreads supports reviews in multiple languages, but the overpowering majority of reviews is written in English. A lot of people who post reviews in English are not necessarily native English speakers, though. But for the German reviews, we think it is safe to assume that most people who post in German are probably native German speakers, whether they be from Germany, Switzerland, Austria. Um, there's some differences that we found uh, just in general between English and German reviews. Um, now, English reviews tend to talk more in capital letters, use more exclamation marks, um, and other expressions of general enthusiasm, like GIFs, um, emojis, etc. There's also more mentions of the author. Um, particularly, the sense of familiarity with authors is much more prominent in English language reviews. In general, English reviews also seem to talk more about author intentions, whereas German reviews talk more about writing style, so they stay closer to the book. Um, English reviews also use the active I more, whereas German reviews are more passive or talk more about the text. Um, so expressions like man fühlt um, are used more often in German um, reviews. Now, for the purposes of validating the English language story world absorption scale, we developed an annotation scheme, which we used to annotate a corpus of English language book reviews from Goodreads. We took the 18 items on the story world absorption scale as point of departure. We simplified some of the language of the original items to kind of match the language that was used on Goodreads more closely. We also added seven items based on a study by Kathleen Baland and colleagues, which um, took place after the story world absorption scale was originally developed. So we could include um, sort of all of the different theoretical aspects of absorption that were not included in the original story world absorption scale. We also added 10 new items, um, basically um, that came up through um, our exploration of Goodreads. Uh, so categories that um, we felt um, displayed absorption, but that were not included in uh, previous uh, research on the SWAS. We wrote some general guidelines about um, units of tagging, uh, what should not be tagged, uh, what the difference is between semantic and conceptual similarity between um, the categories in our guidelines and then the, the segments in uh, the reviews. We also added examples from the reviews for all of the absorption categories where we could find them. Um, we talked about whether the 
there is a presence of absorption in a review or a negation of absorption. We tagged for both. Um, and we also tagged for non-review specific descriptions of absorption. Um, so sometimes people will just talk about, usually I prefer books that um, transport me to another world. Uh, so we tagged for those instances as well, even though they were not about the particular book that was reviewed at the time. Uh, like, like I said, to complete the guidelines, we added examples from the reviews, which kind of looks like this. Um, these examples can help other researchers who want to use the tag set to familiarize themselves with the idiosyncratic language found on digital social reading platforms. Um, and we also added some comments underneath um, where we felt uh, that was necessary. Uh, and we don't have review examples of um, positive statements or negated statements for every item. Some For some items, we couldn't find negations, for example. We have just published the English Absorb Metadata Corpus and Annotation Guidelines in the Journal of Open Humanities Data and on Open Science Framework. So this QR code will take you to the page where all of the tools and all of the preprints are available open access if you're interested. Um, so currently we are developing German language annotation guidelines. Um, for that, basically we first started to translate the category names from English to German with the same group of annotators, which has been lovely because they are familiar with uh, the concept of absorption, have done all of this work already. So they're familiar with um, the language of reviews. And this group consists of both native German speakers and non-native German speakers. Um, so that kind of helps us in discussing some of the, the ambiguities or difficulties in translation. We also looked at some German language research on absorption or narrative engagement, most notably by Marcus Appel and Tobias Richter, to give us some ideas of like, what is the terminology that is used within um, the German um, research on, on absorption. We then went looking for examples for each of the categories in the German reviews. We noted down different expressions and synonyms that reviewers were using, and then decided on the best representation per category based on the number of times that it occurred in the reviews. Throughout the annotation process, we keep adding examples and adjusting translations um, because uh, we look at different genres throughout the rounds. And sometimes the genre that we're looking at will kind of change how people express themselves. Um, and we are also wondering whether there is a change in expression when people are talking about translated books uh, from another language into German or uh, books written by German authors. Um, like I said, we're currently still in the process of annotating the German language reviews uh, and still adding examples and comments to our guidelines. But once they're finished, they will be published um, along with the annotated metadata corpus on the same Open Science Framework page. Um, here, I just want to point out a nice example of a translation issue that we ran into. The item EE2 refers to sympathy, which in German uh, is translated as Mitgefühl. Uh, but the verb Mitfühlen and its many variations like Mitlachen, Mitleiden, um, however, are used in German to describe processes of empathy rather than sympathy. Um, so we have to be very careful kind of in um, tagging um, any of those verbs in German. In both languages, however, we've noticed that readers uh, themselves seem to confuse empathy for sympathy and vice versa. So from this whole process of uh, developing these guidelines and translating them into another language, what we've learned at least is that we probably shouldn't use words like empathy and sympathy in our questionnaire items, but rather go for a description of sympathy, such as I felt bad for this character in English, and the Schicksal dieser Charakter lag mir sehr am Herzen um, in German, which would be loosely translated as the fate of this character was close to my heart. Incidentally, we saw a lot of heart metaphors being used in the German reviews. Okay, so I spoke briefly about some differences that we noticed between English and German reviews. Here, I'll give some examples of differences in the absorption expressions in particular, which resulted in changes or specific instructions being included in the German guidelines that are not there in the English guidelines. Now, the German reviews tend to use more synonyms than the English reviews. So we had to make uh, very clear choices about some of the more prominent words within our um, tag set, like um, story world or character or um, story or book. Uh, within the German, we went for Textwelt, Charakter, Geschichte, 
um, because those were the ones that uh, people kept using uh, the most. The German reviews also include more words that have double meanings. Now, to give you an example, the word spüren, which can be used um, to describe feeling, sensing, or detecting. So uh, it can be used in a sentence like, I feel like um, I was engaged in the story, but it can also be used to describe um, people wanting to figure out who had done it in a mystery novel, for example. Um, Related to that was an interesting uh, thing. Um, we found out that German reviews were not just more passive, but also more direct in a way. Um, so when talking about spüren and how it's used to describe feeling, um, we kind of discovered that uh, the German reviews uh, do not use this kind of sentence structure all that often, whereas English reviews use them all the time. I felt like I was tired of um, reading this. Uh, and in the words of the German speaking annotators in our group, um, we Germans, we don't feel tired, we are tired. And that's kind of the difference that we would see in terms of how um, the Germans express themselves differently from the English reviews. Uh, there was a lot less um, complicated um, sentence uh, constructions. Um, they were a lot more direct. Um, another typical word that we found was eintauchen, so diving in, which is used within the German um, sample uh, to denote general absorption in the overall book. Uh, but of course, it has a movement connotation that is often used in transportation categories. And so we had to be more careful in distinguishing those, uh, those uh, categories within the German uh, guidelines. So that led to some additional comments um, there. Uh, and also we had a lot more difficulty distinguishing between form and content in German reviews and guidelines. So in the English guidelines, we say only when a story world or a character is specifically mentioned, can you tag something as story world absorption. Um, but not when someone is talking about author intentions or style, because we're trying to keep it very clear um, what story world absorption is all about. In German, these things were very much entwined. Um, so people would be talking about um, the style of writing and characters in a very same sentence. So we had to be a little bit more lenient in the German guidelines to make sure that we can find enough examples of absorption. Now, all of this work so far that we've done is to prepare ourselves for the experiments to come at the core of our current SHART project, Shared Reading in the Age of Digitalization. Now, in this project, we are going to compare face-to-face -face shared reading to online shared reading in two different contexts, namely the UK and German-speaking Switzerland. In these comparative investigations, I want to focus on disentangling the different underlying mechanisms of shared reading. And one of those mechanisms is absorption. Based on previous research on shared reading, we know that absorption plays a role, but we also know from conversations with shared reading providers that absorption takes a different shape in communal reading versus solitary reading, and thus we need new measures to take this into account. We looked at absorption expression on Goodreads as these conversations take place in a social context, albeit a different one, which we hoped would inspire us. We will work on this together with partners at The Reader in Liverpool and Sharing Stories Verein in Basel to make sure that their experience with shared reading is reflected in the measures. Additionally, we now have a better idea of how German and English readers express themselves differently. One approach we are thinking about for a first step of item generation or adaptation is to use a list of synonyms and ask participants to circle those words that best describe their absorbing reading experiences. After we come up with a list of new items in both languages, in which we will give priority to natural expression over straight translation, we will take the usual route of exploratory and confirmatory factor analysis through a series of pilot studies on shared reading in both the UK and Switzerland. Now, of course, there are some limitations to using reviews as a source of inspiration for wording our new items. Uh, especially German reviewers seem to take a more professional stance towards writing these reviews, copying or adopting a professional style which was more distant, which is also what Germans are being taught in school to take more of a passive voice when they're writing. We also saw that expressions could differ between discussions of genres. For example, when reviewers were discussing mysteries or thrillers, 
they tend to talk more on a general level. Like the book made me emotionally engaged rather than talking about specific events or characters um, because they don't want to spoil the story for other readers. Having said that, this was just my attempt at multilingual skill development, which is still ongoing. But I'm not saying in any way that this is the best way to do it. And I'm very curious to hear from you guys in Monopoly um, whether you have done this and how you have done this. How do you go about replication of studies in our field when more than one language area is involved? Uh, can we consider straight translation studies true replications? Uh, what does replication in the context of empirical literary studies even mean? What does it look like? Now, I think that these are really important questions um, to ask and to try to answer together. Uh, and that's why I've worked together um, with some colleagues, um, most notably Amir Harash, um, to come up with a new uh, network uh, which we've called uh, the Coralites Network, um, to which I want to introduce you and invite you to take a part in. Basically, the main aims of the Coralites Network are to broaden the scope of the empirical study of literature by translating instruments and materials in a broad range of languages, um, languages that go beyond the German, Dutch, and English that we see so often within uh, empirical literary studies. We also want to stimulate cross-cultural replication within our field by offering a repository of open access measures, stimulus materials, protocols, and data sets available in a wide range of languages. Uh, and we then also want to develop a course-based research experience for undergraduate students, where we teach them research skills by involving them in multiple lab studies. Now, if you're interested in learning more about this network or being a part of the network, or just discussing these issues of translatability and replication within our field, um, I would like to invite you to come to my presentation in Monopoly uh, and we can have a further conversation about it. Thank you for um, your attention. And thank you also uh, to my collaborators, Lina Roux, Johanna Vogelsanger, Massimo Luzetti, Tina Ternes, and Antonia Vogler.